Please welcome General Motors Chairman and CEO, Mr. Rick Wagner. Thanks very much. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be back here at the Geneva Show. For General Motors, 2006 was a year of great progress on a number of fronts. That's good because it needed to be. In 2007, we'll stay focused on moving from turnaround to transformation in the U.S., here in Europe, and around the world. And a key element of our strategy is our drive for environmental and technolo technology leadership. In recent months at both the Los Angeles and Detroit auto shows, I've spoken about societal concerns over energy and the environment, including the very important fact that oil alone is unlikely to supply the world's future automotive energy requirements. For the global auto industry, this means that we must, as a business necessity, develop alternative sources of propulsion based on alternative sources of energy in order to meet the world's growing demand for our cars and trucks. While this may sound like a challenging assignment, it's also an extraordinary opportunity because by developing alternative sources of energy and propulsion, we have the chance to mitigate many of the issues surrounding energy availability, such as business risks and environmental concerns, including global climate change. The key, as we see it at GM, is energy diversity. That is, being able to offer our customers vehicles that can be powered with many different sources of energy. I know energy and the environment are very topical issues in Europe right now as you review the European Commission's proposed emissions targets of 130 grams of CO2 per kilometer. To be clear, GM supports the goal of reducing CO2 emissions. And although the Commission's current proposal is a significant stretch, we're working hard to do our part, including new technologies that improve fuel economy and reduce vehicle emissions. Ultimately, we believe that environmental goals can be accomplished most effectively with an integrated approach that engages automakers, fuel providers, governments, and consumers. Now, for our part, we're pursuing a strategy of energy diversity on several fronts. First, we've significantly expanded and accelerated our commitment to the development of electrically driven vehicles vehicles in which an electric motor turns the wheels, including fuel cell vehicles and extended range electric vehicles like the Chevrolet Volt concept we unveiled in Detroit. Second, we've dramatically intensified our efforts to displace traditional petroleum-based fuels with alternatives like E85 and CNG. And third, GM will continue to improve the efficiency of our internal combustion engines, both gas and diesel. Let me briefly expand on each, starting with electrically driven vehicles. For a number of years now, we've made a major commitment to the development of hydrogen fuel cell propulsion. In fact, our vision of the hydrogen fuel cell future, the fully drivable Chevrolet sequel fuel cell concept, is making its European debut right here in Geneva and is on display in the GM Forum. To help us understand the real-world potential of this technology, we'll introduce a test fleet of 100 fuel cell-powered Chevrolet Equinoxes in the U.S. later this year. Today, I'm pleased to announce plans for a smaller-scale demonstration fleet in Europe to see how customers here respond to this technology. Early next year, expect to see a fleet of approximately 10 fuel cell vehicles operating in Europe. Some of you were with us in Detroit in January when we launched eFlex, a, fl a family of electrically driven propulsion systems specifically engineered for future small and mid-sized vehicles, represented first by the Chevrolet Volt. The E in eFlex, of course, stands for electric, because no matter how an eFlex vehicle is configured, it's always driven by electricity. eFlex is flexible, because the electricity it uses to drive the vehicle can come from a wide range of sources. A hydrogen fuel cell, a small internal combustion engine running on ethanol or biodiesel, or the, electric, or the power grid itself, in which case the electricity can be generated by natural gas, wind, hydroelectric, and so on. 
In short, e-flex vehicles will enjoy one of the really outstanding benefits of electricity, the opportunity to diversify fuel sources for the vehicle, which will enable us to adapt this technology for markets all around the world. And Volt is just the beginning. In fact, expect to see future eFlex concept applications very soon at the upcoming Shanghai and Frankfurt Motor Shows, for example, that feature new technologies tailored for local GM brands. Another thing we're doing to promote energy diversity is to dramatically intensify our efforts to displace traditional petroleum-based fuels. In the near term, and a point very relevant to the current CO2 discussion, we're working to reduce the consumption of petroleum-based fuels by displacing them with alternatives, such as biogas CNG-powered vehicles like the Safira or with E85. We're big believers in bioethanol, both as a renewable source of fuel and for its potential to significantly reduce CO2 emissions on a well-to-wheels basis. That is, from the start of fuel production to its end use in powering automobiles. In fact, with 10 European countries now offering this fuel and its increasing availability in the U.S., bioethanol has become the world's fastest growing alternative fuel. We look to the European Commission to help create a strong policy framework to continue the development of the E85 infrastructure. We already offer Europe's best-selling flex fuel vehicle, the Saab 9.5, which helped Saab achieve record sales in Europe last year. And we're pleased to confirm today that we're extending the Saab biopower lineup to include the 9.3 family of vehicles, such as the 9.3 Cabrio, right here on the stage. Customers can begin ordering 9.3 biopower vehicles immediately, with production slated to begin early next month. This means that Saab will offer eco-friendly variants in all models of its European lineup. In addition, Saab is also show showing a BioPower 100 concept car here in Geneva, which runs on pure bioethanol. And we're exploring the possibility of leveraging Saab's BioPower expertise across other GM brands in Europe. A third thing we're doing to promote energy diversity and reduce emissions in Europe is to continue to improve the efficiency of our internal combustion engines, both gas and diesel, as we have really for decades. In fact, this morning I'm pleased to announce that we're continuing to broaden our diesel offerings in Europe with an all-new 250 horsepower, 2.9 liter V6 diesel. This new diesel engine features state-of-the-art injection and an innovative closed-loop combustion control system for minimum emissions and maximum performance. In short, it will be efficient, clean, and powerful, offering a 40% increase in power with a reduction in fuel consumption and CO2 emissions versus today's V6 diesel. What's more, this new diesel will provide a 25% reduction in CO2 emissions compared to its gasoline equivalent. This new, this new engine is yet one more example of GM's ongoing commitment to energy diversity and environmental leadership. And its first application will be in our all-new Cadillac CTS.